swapping out my OE U-joint axle shafts for RCV performance axle shafts. Stick around. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Clint and as you saw in the intro, I'm installing RCV axle shafts in Napalm today. You may ask, why do you want to change out axle shafts? The Rubicon's got the Dana 44s. Well, Dana 44 is great axle. Uh, it's a good starting point and the axle shafts are adequate on a stock level. But as soon as you start adding big heavy tires and wheels and then you get out and you start wheeling, axle shafts become a liability. A friend of mine broke an axle shaft at Windrock and he's on 37s, had the stock axle shafts. He had a problem. I don't want to have that problem. So what's the difference between the RCV axle shaft and the Dana axle shaft? Well, let me show you. The OE axle shaft is a U-joint style. It's got four points of contact. So if you notice this, when you turn this, it will bind up when you're at full lock. If you've got oversized tires on your Jeep, you may have noticed this already. When you turn real sharp, it'll feel like a bump in your steering wheel, and sometimes it makes an ugly noise. I mean, what in the hell was that? Well, it's called crow hop, and that's what you get with a U-joint style axle shaft. The RCV is a CV joint. It's, I know you can't see real well because it's full of grease, but so inside this barrel, you've got six ball bearings, and it rotates around on this race. And so when you turn this at full lock, you've got six points of contact, and it's much more smooth. It does away with the crow hop. You won't get any binding with these RCVs like you do on a U-joint axle. Another thing with these shafts is these JL Dana 44 RCV axle shafts are rated to be stronger than the OE Dana 60 one-ton axle shafts. It should alleviate any questions about strength in your drivetrain on your front axle. I've already done the driver's side. I saved the passenger side because that's where the fad is and that's probably where most people are going to have questions. The driver's side is the exact same thing except without the fad. It's a pretty simple process. It took me about maybe an hour to do the driver's side. Let's get started on the passenger side. So before we get ready to install these, there is a little bit of assembly required. This is the one piece axle shaft for the passenger side. And I forgot to mention, I went with the one piece to do a, completely do away with the fad. If you don't know what the fad is, it's front axle disconnect. Your passenger side axle is two pieces. And when we get into the fad and I take it apart, I'll show you how that works. But to assemble these axle shafts, splined on this side, this is the axle, or this is the differential side. This is the side that's going to go into your gears. This side with this spring clip on it, this is the side that goes into the CV joint. And all you do is just kind of press it down on there and you'll hear it snap and pop in. Make sure you put the bell cap on the shaft before you install the bell. Just like that. Jack your Jeep up, put a jack stand under it, take your wheel off, take your axle nut off using a 36 millimeter. Then using a 21 millimeter, you got to take your brake caliper off. This bolt right here, this bolt right here. Remember kids, don't turn the bolt the wrong way. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Slide your caliper off and hang it up out of the way. Now we're going to take a T35 and remove this retaining bolt for your rotor. See that? Pull your rotor off. Now we're going to take a 10 millimeter and take out these bolts for the dust shield. Now take a number five hex head or a number five Allen wrench and take out the ABS sensor. Pull that dude straight up. Now we can take a 13 millimeter and take the three screws that hold the unit bearing or hub on. Find them right there. Right there. And then one on this side. Right there. I find that using a 
long box end wrench works great. You take all three of those bolts out and you can throw them away if you want to. They send you new ones with the axles. Now you can pull the unit bearing off. And pull the axle shaft out. Now to get to the fad, if your stabilizer is still in the stock location like mine is, you have to take that off. Now take these two bolts in the front out, right here, right here. Be a 13 millimeter. Now you can take this bolt out using a 13 millimeter and your stabilizer will come off. All right, this is where I know I'm gonna be different than almost all y'all. I've got a big beefy skid plate from Clayton Off-Road on here that I have to take off to get to the fad. But to take this off, I gotta remove two hex head bolts, which are an H5, and two 10 millimeter bolts on each side, one up here and then one on the other side. All right, once you get your skid plate off, you need to disconnect the wire, pull the red tab up or out, mash down on the white button, and then plug it. Now you got four bolts holding the fat on. They're 13 millimeter. One, two, three, and four. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. I got diff fluid all over my driveway. Mama's gonna be happy about that. Uh, now, up in here, you can see the other end of your axle shaft. Try to pull it out, right? And there's a C-clip on here. Pull it out enough where you can rotate it. Where you can spin it and find the back side. This is gonna be about right there. And give it a good tug like that now you can slide the axle all the way out the tube maybe if you can get it in the hole out the other end. Now you can pull the axle, sh the rest of the axle shaft out. Okay, to give you guys a basic understanding of how this fad system works, this is the differential side of the axle shaft, this is the wheel side, and the two shafts are joined like this. You see they spin independently of each other. Now this is the fad controller, the fad module has this coupler that's splined along with these gears, right? So when you're in two wheel drive, when you're in two wheel drive, this coupler is over here on the outboard side, on the outboard axle shaft, so that these, this wheel can spin without turning the differential, creating less rotational resistance. Now when you go into four high or four low, this module will slide this over and lock these two axles together. That's how the FAD system works. I wish they would have went old school if they were gonna do this. I wish they'd have gone old school and just put old fashioned locking hubs on the outside. That would have required folks to get out of their Jeep and 
manually lock the hubs in, but it's pretty foolproof. And this this whole setup scares me. Um, electronics can fail, and two-piece axle shafts. I'm not a fan. So we're going with the solid one-piece axle, and we're going to alleviate that problem. Now this is going to still work. This is going to go back in there just like this without the coupler. The coupler is going to be out. So this rod will just slide backwards and forth over this shaft so that the system, the electronical part of the system, will think that it's operating as it should. When you get ready to put this axle in here, you're going to have to get in the back there and stick your finger in the hole where the seal is to try to guide that shaft up in there so that you don't mess the seal up. This part's going to be a pain getting this cap through the knuckle. It will fit, but it takes some uh, it takes some force. There it goes. Now, you saw with all that hammering I was doing, this cap didn't go up over the bell. This is a pain, but to be honest, I really didn't have that much trouble with it on the pack, on the driver's side. Now, I don't know if this is new for RCV or not, but they sent this. It came in the hardware pack with the bolts. What this is, it fits over top of the axle shaft up and again the housing like that. And it gives a solid place for that for that cap to rest against. So you're trying to force it up on the bell. Take a zip tie and just go on top of the bell and underneath that cap on the inside. And Take your hammer again. It's on there. Now just pull the zip tie out. Your hands ain't covered with grease. There. It's sealed right up on there. All right, good deal. And that will complete your installation. Um, put everything back together the way you took it off. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's why I didn't show it. The passenger side was a little bit harder than the driver side. I don't know why. Um, just make sure I just want to reiterate this on the passenger side make sure you put the bell cap on the shaft before you install the bell it'll make your life a whole lot easier if you like this video check out some of my other installs in the playlist it'll be on the end screen here at the end you guys I hope you did like it remember to like comment subscribe and share till the next time keep the shiny side up Jeep on